Homies, it is time to update my five-star characters tier list in Genshin Impact. It's been about eight months since I made my last one. Six brand new five-stars have come out in that time, and I'm not gonna spoil anything, but my opinions have changed a little bit on a good amount of characters from my previous tier list. Homies, I hope you guys learned something, but we've got one important thing we've gotta get out of the way. First. So my last tier list started with about a five minute long monologue of, hey, it is hard for me to know who you should pull for. I don't know your weapons. I don't know your artifacts. I don't know what characters you have the most fun playing. You should be pulling for your favorite character, even if they are in bra tier or if they're in I tier. That is how you have fun in a gacha game. So if your favorite character is in a low tier, just ignore me. Go get that character, build them up and have some fun. You can 36 star the abyss with any character you want. If you build them up right, learn how to play and you're good at the game. Just keep in mind, this is a tier list. The only proper way I can make a tier list is being completely objective in my opinion of a character's strength. Where there are characters, there are gonna be some that are better than others. Not every character is created equal. And finally, let's just go over the tiers. We've got S+, plus. it was SS last time, it's S+, plus now. Game changers. These are the best of the best characters in Genshin Impact. You immediately feel a massive power spike on your account. Once you get this character, the teams they are on feel so much better. These are the characters that enable the best teams at all of Genshin Impact. They are all insane. And then S, very strong characters. Homies, these characters are super freaking good. They just usually do something similar to another character. They're not unbelievably unique. They don't break the game, but they are all very, very, very good characters. A, solid characters. Like I said, Every character in Genshin can perform well and 36 star the abyss. Solid characters are just as the name says, they are solid, they are good. They are pretty great to be honest, but they do pale a little bit in comparison to the characters above them, but they can get it done. And then we've got B, which is I characters. Like everything I've said, they can work, but they feel weaker. They only feel strong in certain situations or with like three exact perfect characters that support them amazingly. These characters aren't just plug and play immediately out of the box broken. They can be good or sometimes they're just pretty all right across the board. They're all right. Then we get to the bra tier. I'll tell you now, there's not that many characters in the bra tier, but these are unfortunately the weakest five stars in the game. You can make them work if you try hard enough. But I mean, yo, they're really not the best. This tier list is going to be in order of when the character was released, but I will occasionally ask chat to give me a character to throw on the tier list. So it's gonna be a little bit different. Just have some fun. And I may mention in a character's description that their C1 really propels them up or really fixes their problems. But guys, just know this tier list is C0 only. Let's kick off the tier list with Aloy Boom. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep this as short as possible. They didn't even try with this character. The character has ICDs on the bombs. If they all hit at the same time, they all have a, like a same ICD and you don't get the stacks. She literally just doesn't work. She's just bad. And a lot of you guys don't even have her. So don't worry about it. Bruh. All right, who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? <sighs> you guys really making me dig out Dia already? Take it from the guy who loves Dia. I have her triple crowned. She's C4 with her signature weapon. Bro, Dia, move over, Aloy. God damn, she, she really didn't want to be at the bottom, did she? Guys, Dia, it sucks. Dia is just straight up bad. And that breaks my freaking heart because I think she's one of, the most, one of the most beautiful characters in the entire game. Okay, low pyro application, straight up low damage. Her kit doesn't even synergize with herself, okay? Her skill wants her to be off field, supporting allies, giving in interruption resistance, making them take uh, less damage because she takes the damage. And then her burst, she takes her skill off the field and then just sits there punching for like six seconds. And it doesn't do very much damage because they just didn't want to give her a big multiplier. You can make her work. She can work on Burgeon. A lot of people say Burgeon Dia is bad. Dude, it definitely works. It is fine and you could 36 star the abyss with it. It's just not as good as Toma. That's the point. And then her damage build, homie, you got to invest so much to even make it remotely worth it. It breaks my heart. Dia is not 
a good character, but go out there and make her work and you will have my respect. Back into the normal swing of things. Let's start with the standard banner characters. Jean is coming up first. Jean has seen a pretty big renaissance in the last three weeks with Farina's release. Now, I don't want this whole tier list to be about Farina did this, Farina did that, because quite frankly, I don't even think Farina changed the game more than like Dendro being added changed the game, or even like Nahida in general changed the game. All right, so I'm going to try my best to not have things be crazy biased on other characters. As of right now, I think Jean definitely belongs in solid characters. Genuinely might be low, very strong. Here's the cool thing about Jean. Full party wide heal once you click the button. Easy. And that is just fantastic. She is an Animo character. Animo characters have access to Viridescent Venerer, one of the best artifact sets in the game that can boost every single teammate, I guess except Geo or Animo characters and Dendro. Teammates damage in the game, and that is a invaluable asset to have on a lot of teams. So big heal, Viridescent Venerer Shred. She does pretty decent damage herself, and she enables Sunfire comps with Bennett, where she swirls the element that your character is affected by. Even Dory can do it, Electro. I don't know if anyone's came up with a name for um, Electro Fire because everyone hates Dory, but I guess you could do that too. Uh, Gina's unique, she's cool, she's versatile, and she's just genuinely pretty darn strong. A tier. Next up is Mona. From day one, she has been this somewhat clunky, I'm gonna say it, Hydro Catalyst support character. Moving around with her is frustrating. Dodging attacks, dashing because of the water puddle thing is not really fun to play. So let's take away the clunkiness. Just how effective is she as a character? Her off field hydro application is all right. And the buff she gives with her burst is really good. But that's just about all it does. She's great for one shot comps for clickbait, super huge numbers. Okay, I'll admit that, but just taking her into the abyss, taking her onto an everyday comp, there are so many characters that completely outclass her. I almost find no real reason to use my Mona. She's probably at like the top of I tier. You can make her work, but this is my honest thoughts. Y'all sleeping on Mona? I'm sleeping with Mona. We are not the same. <laughs> Good one, good one chat. Our favorite Monstat Batmaner, Deluke. Vaporize is a great comp, Melt is a great comp, and Deluke can do that, but dude, he came out on day one, it's been a long time, and his, just straight up, his damage numbers are just weak, okay? It, it, that's the truth of it. He, he's flexible, he's fun to play, and you can get the comps to work like you get Hu Tao to work, like you get Yoimiya to work, like you get even Shang Ling to work, but dude, he just doesn't do a lot of damage. And that's what it all comes down to at the end of the day. I'm gonna put him at the top of Bra. I just genuinely don't see a point in using him unless you really like him. You can get it done. You can 36 on the abyss, okay? But he's pretty darn weak. Deluke isn't that bad. Um, yeah, I'd kind of argue he is. <laughs> Chad is baby raging about Deluke. I could argue that he might be at the bottom of I characters. Fine, fine, you, you babies. Chi Chi is up next. I literally think Chi Chi is better than Tia. <laughs> the more I think about it, Chi Chi's gotten a little bit better because of how healing has gotten better in Genshin. But let's just keep it a buck. Cryo, not a great element. It's one of the weaker elements in the game. Her healing is like good, but it's not like broken, crazy awesome. And a lot of her healing, she wants to be on field, normal attacking to get the most out of it. She's not great, but she gets the job done. You need the heals. Maybe you want some super conduct. Maybe you want some off field cryo tenacity. She'll be all right. Let's put her in eye. You go, Chi Chi. Lady Kaching is up next. I am excited to talk about Kaching because I think she is one of the best standard banner characters in the entire game. We all know that Dendro coming out buffed Electro a ton. Kaching is really freaking good, okay? Her burst costs nothing. It is up all the time. Tons of damage and iframes making you invincible for your team. The Electro infusion on her autos, it's not only fun, but it's up all the time she has 100 percent electro uptime if you play her well she gets the bonus crit she synergizes so well with all the dendro characters and she has no energy requirements at all 
whatsoever. Like, she just has it up all the time when you have zero energy recharge. And she has amazing, like, low spender, if you want to say, free to play options for swords. She pretty much uses any DPS sword in the entire game. I'm talking Black Sword. I'm talking the new Battle Pass Sword. Um, Flu Sandra, Fester. Like, she can use all these swords. Uh, Lion's Roar, free to play, amazing on her. Now, it is very early into the tier list. So, don't get too crazy about this, but I think that she is going to barely slip in to the very strong characters. Kaching, very good, very free to play friendly, and um, super easy to build, because she has low requirements for a lot of stuff. Rounding out the standard banner characters is our first ever Dendro standard banner character, Tainari. Tainari is really good, straight up. That's just the straight fact, baby, because Dendro is very strong. He does a lot of freaking damage. His kit feels very fluid. He can get his damage out very quick, and he synergizes very well with a lot of the electro off fielders we have, like Fischl, like Yai Miko, so that he can pump out a lot, a lot of damage. Now, he can't really do as well as characters like All Haitham or Nahida when it comes to like this on field normal attacking long-term dendro application but he's a very good burst aggravate damage dealer he's very 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 strong he can clear a lot of content in this game very quickly so i am going to put him into the very strong tier as well do i think he's better than Kaching? i think they are very very similar so I'm gonna let this ride, I'm gonna let this simmer, and I might move him a little bit, but I do think he belongs in the very strong characters tier. Homies, real quick, guys, I am on a dream run to hit 50,000 subs by the end of the year. It was an absolute dream of mine, and we've been pumping out videos and content all the time. If you guys are enjoying this tier list, and you guys are finding knowledge from it, finding some enjoyment from it, please, Subscribe to the channel. I promise it will not be the last video you see helping you out, giving you some laughs about good old Genshin Impact. I appreciate you guys a lot. Sub, back to the list. All right, chat, we did all the standard Raider characters. Let's spin it up. Someone give me a character to throw onto the tier list right freaking now. Ooh, Boom wants to start some drama right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the chat has chosen Yae Miko. If you watched my previous tier list, this was one of my most divisive takes. One of the ones that got the most people to clickety clack down in the comments and tell me how much they don't like my opinion. Look, I'm going to try my absolute best to take my bias about Yai Miko out of this judgment. I very actively do not enjoy playing this character. I really like looking at her, but I do not enjoy playing her. I do think she's clunky. I do think her attack AI is not great, but Let's get down to the facts. Yai Miko is an off-field Electro sub DPS. And with the addition of Golden Troop, she has gotten a large buff to her skill damage. Now, did that alone change my opinion on Yai Miko? No, it did not, but it did help a little bit. I am here to tell you that I can admit that Yai Miko is a very strong character. Off-field Electro is extremely good okay it just enables so many different teams it enables some of the best spread dps's in the game like tainari like all height them it enables a bunch of aggravate teams like yai miko like fischl like kaching okay she can come in takes her a little bit to set up but she's going to do a ton of damage a ton of electro damage and if you can get her energy recharge up enough you can drop fat damage burst but she's not 100 plug and play i think for her to do like the best she can absolutely do she does need a lot of energy recharge or teammates that can funnel a lot of energy to her i gotta admit that she does a lot more damage than i have said in the past and i'm gonna put her right here in very strong characters i think she's gonna go just a little bit above kaching and tainari we're gonna see kaching and tainari slowly moving down this list not to say they're bad they are very good Yai Miko is very good. All I want to tell you though is play her trial, maybe hop on a friend's account that has Yai Miko on it and really make sure that you enjoy her play style. Just check, you may get frustrated playing her like I do, but she is a very useful and very strong character. Homies, going back into the order of the tier list, we've got our first ever Archon on the tier list, Venti. Venti is sometimes one of the best characters in the entire freaking game hands 
down. It depends on the abyss floor, the enemies that you are given, all that kind of stuff. He can be absolutely game destroyingly broken. And sometimes he can just feel really average when he's against one single target, super heavy enemy that he can't crowd control at all. So where does he lie on the normal day? I think he is still very, very freaking good. We do have characters that are animo, that are supports, that do crowd control, that people might say are better. Okay, let's wait a little bit longer in the tier list. But dude, this character is still really good. I think every single player will enjoy having a venti on their account because when those floors come into the abyss, the venti obliterates, he will destroy them. He does a pretty darn decent amount of damage. Once again, Viridus and Venerous Swirls are amazing and his grouping crowd control is unparalleled. Don't let the brain rot comments of TikTok and Reddit make you think that he's really just power crept and really not good anymore. He is great, 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 just not all the time. What's up, Klee? Look, I'm gonna keep this short and as simple as I can. Klee is very cute. I like her a lot. She is a relic of Genshin's past. Before the Hoyoverse team really hit their stride in designing characters' playstyles because <laughs> Klee feels very bad to play. Her animations are very slow. They are very clunky. It's hard to get her attacks out fast enough to not get interrupted. Dude, she's very frustrating to play in just like an actively bad way. Like it's almost not even worth making it work for her. Okay, so I'm really sorry, but Klee goes into the bro tier. Now I will say I did play Klee the other day on stream on a Farina reverse melt team. It felt really good. Okay, Klee was enabling Farina to drop some fat vapes. Klee was on the field, doing a lot of damage, supported by the team. It was fun. But yeah, just use Shungling if you really want the better version of that team. You can make Klee work, but guys, she's really, really one of the weakest characters in the game. Klee's better than Deluke though. Yeah. Deluke, bro, I defend you all the time. Okay, I think you're a lot of fun and you're really cool, but I'm sorry, it's just the truth. Our favorite Fatui Harbinger, actually probably not, everyone loves Arlequino. What's up, dude? This guy leads one of the strongest teams in the game, child national, international, whatever you wanna call it, okay? <laughs> I don't follow the national news. This guy does crazy freaking damage. He can be supported by like Bennett, Shangling, all these amazing characters, and he just absolutely pops off. Where his weaknesses reside, are that he's pretty darn one dimensional. He doesn't super work on a lot of other teams, like a Hyper Bloom team or, you know, Mono Hydro. I guess you could use him on these, but it's really not where he shines. He really shines on this pretty much one specific team. He is still a top tier speed running, abyss destroying machine. He just like, there's other characters that make a way, way, way bigger impact on your account. And those are the characters that are gonna be in the game changing tier. He's very good, he still holds up. If you really like him, pull him because he will absolutely pop off and you will have a fun time mastering him S tier. Zhong Li has made his appearance. If you guys watched my last tier list, I put him in the S plus tier. Zhong Li trivializes a ton of content in Genshin Impact because he's super easy to build. His shield is massive. It lets you use all these different characters and it lets them not get interrupted, which just means you can do that Yoi Mia comp carefree. You can run the Hu Tao vape team carefree. You can run Xiao and not worry about getting knocked around or wanderer, all this kind of stuff, which is a super valuable thing to have. And when his pillar is up, he shreds the resistances of the enemy a little bit. So you do do a little bit more damage. But as Genshin has matured and gone on in time as a game, they have made the game harder, ever so slightly harder, meaning the Abyss has higher DPS ceilings that we need to hit. And when Zhongli is on the squad, there is usually a support that you could be running instead of him that will boost your team's damage a lot. Yes, you may get knocked around more. You may need to retry a few more times because you get one shot by that big enemy. But that's just part of the game. You don't usually go in there and one shot everything every time. And now another big thing about Zhongli that troubles me is beginner players. I used to have a free to play account. I stopped playing it a long time ago. I got Zhongli on it because back then I was like, dude, I gotta get Zhongli. Pretty much I had him, I had these shields 
that was great, but I didn't have enough damage to get stuff done in the abyss because I got Zhongli. I could have just gotten a character that does a lot more damage and blasted through the abyss, but I chose to get the safe character. So I think he's actually not that good for beginner players to get because he doesn't do a lot of damage. I think Zhongli is the perfect late game player's comfort character. You want to go into the abyss. You've got lots of great characters that have enough DPS. Zhongli is going to make it completely painless and you are just going to blast through and you're not going to worry at all. But for those reasons, I think I'm putting him into very strong. Potentially, we'll look at the game changers later, but the bottom, the very, very bottom of S+, I still think the amount that he trivializes this game makes it so you don't have to worry about anything. He deserves to be in very strong, absolutely. Next up, we have Albedo. Interesting character. He does a good amount of damage. That's cool. He's Geo. He doesn't really provide that much support for the team. He doesn't generate a ton of energy. He's just okay. If you get him, you can make him work. He, he can work on a lot of different teams because Geo is a relatively inoffensive element. So you can throw him on a lot of different team comps and he will provide a bit of value. But homies, there are so many characters in this game that provide way more value than Albedo. He is not necessary to have on any team comp in the game. He's kind of just like, if he's your favorite, you can make him work. And on those very geo heavy teams, he is a fantastic option. Not to mention his best weapon, Cinnabar Spindle, was an old event weapon from like over two years ago, maybe three years ago at this point, and you can't get it. He's fine. I'd probably put him about here. He's not amazing. It's time for the GOAT. Gone Yu, one of the absolute queens of the history of Genshin Impact. When she dropped, she was absolutely cracked, crazy, broken, doing a ton of damage. Today, dude, this girl still does a lot of damage, okay? She has not been power crap. She has not like fallen off. She's just potentially not the best character ever compared to every other character in the game. She is still extremely good. You can go blast open the abyss with Gan Yu. And the thing I love about Gan Yu is you can run her on freeze teams. Okay, so freeze, Blizzard Shrayer Gan Yu, hitting big crits, boom, 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 keep it frozen, they dead as hell. You can also run melt teams with Gan Yu. She is extremely easy to melt with because she gets to wait, hold the charge shot, aim. You can wait for your pyro application to tick, whether it's Shangling, Kazuha, Bennett, whatever, boom, and hit a fat melt. Burning Nahida is also freaking amazing with Ganyu. She does a lot of damage. Now, she's a charge attack character. Not everyone loves that play style. That doesn't hold back if she is good or not. One more thing about Ganyu, amazing free-to-play options, which is pretty darn important when you're picking up a character, okay? You can get Prototype Crescent, the craftable weapon. It is super good on her. A lot of you guys probably, unfortunately, have almost bow. You could use that. Ibis Piercer was an event weapon. Great on her. And then the new battle pass weapon, the like Blazing Sun, something like that. Awesome on her too, okay? Lots of great weapon options. I think on you is absolutely amazing. She's definitely 100% still in the very strong tier of characters. You can use her as like a burst support on cryo team. Dude, she's so good, man. If you love Ganyu, she is an absolutely great pickup. Let's go Ganyu. Everyone's favorite Yaksha, the pretty boy, fan favorite of Genshin Impact, Xiao. Now, I'm gonna start with this. Xiao is an Animo DPS character and Animo DPS characters kind of have it rough here in Genshin, okay? It is harder for them to receive elemental damage buffs just because there's not that many characters that do that. We've got like Jean C4 and of course, Faruzan C6, but these are not very common and easy to get, okay? And they don't have offensive reactions. Swirl scales with elemental mastery level talent, whatever. It does not scale with stats that a DPS character that scales with attack like Xiao wants attack, crit rate, and crit damage. So the reactions that he has to deal damage are limited, but they make up for that by giving Xiao very strong multipliers um, for his attacks. So Xiao does do a lot of damage, but he does require very specific teammates to help him do what he wants to do. He needs that Faruzan, he needs that C4 gene. He needs like Bennett to boost his attack. Animo DPSs have it rough. He is good for sure, but he does pale in comparison 
to the other top tier just meta destroying dps characters we have in genshin xiao is gonna stay in the solid tier eeks fans will know i absolutely love and adore hu tao hu tao does so much damage dude and she is really freaking fun to play there is a big elephant in the room when it comes to hu tao it is her c0 versus her c1 this is a c0 tier list so keep that in mind her C1 makes it so her charge attack does not take stamina when her skill is up. Her charge attack is how she does her massive vapes that do a ton of damage. If you play Hu Tao at C0, she can still do a ton of damage, but her play style is harder and it's a little less fun to get the maximum damage out of her. You need to like jump cancel instead of dash cancel and jump canceling is a little finicky, not so fun. Anywho, at the end of the day, Hu Tao does so much damage synergizes with so many teams she's so much fun she has great free to play options like deathmatch like dragon's bane and a ton of five star like all the five star uh pole arms are super good on her i absolutely love this freaking character at c0 i think placing her right here is absolutely fair her damage is still out of this world 100k vapes dude every second and a half girl pops off i love hu tao I'm gonna be honest, she would move up a couple spots. Maybe, I'm genuinely saying this, maybe even make it into the bottom, bottom, bottom of S plus um, at C1. Hu Tao is great. Consider C1. Chat, who would do? Go. Baizu. Baizu stocks have risen because of how Farina has made healing better. But not everyone has Farina. I'm being smart with how I'm doing this tier list. Baizu has big heals. That is fantastic. Okay, he heals while he's off the field with his burst and he heals a lot with his little snake when he comes in um, and drops his skill while he's on the field. My big problem with Baizu is two big things. Actually, I guess it's three big things, okay? Three is his energy requirements are actually kind of tough, okay? You gotta run like five or have a lot of energy recharge on him to get his burst up. His second thing is his burst, guys, he is not a shield character. When I think of I need a shield, I do not think of this character because his shields are extremely inconsistent. You get the shield when it refreshes. The shield is abysmally small. It's gonna break from a Hilatro punch, okay? But what it does is it gives you that interruption resistance for that one hit. But if you get hit again, before you get the refresh, you are getting knocked away. You're getting knocked over. It's just straight up annoying. I don't like his shield at all. The third thing I wanted to say was he competes with a four-star character, Yao Yao. When I'm playing the Abyss, when I'm popping off with teams, I say this a lot on stream, Yao Yao is a five-star in disguise, okay? She applies Dendro on field, she applies Dendro off field, and her heal is massive all the time. Her skill and her burst heal in big chunks, or skill, whatever, but her burst is just such a massive chunk to the team. Yao Yao is really freaking good. They are very comparable characters, and that is just kind of weird when you're a five-star character. So, I don't know, this is where I, I put him. Especially when you don't let Farina team comps bog your mind. He is a good character, please do not get that wrong. He's great, he's just not like absolutely game-changing or anything like that. I'm gonna keep him here for now, we'll see how it goes. Next up is Monstat's big booty girl. Yula, Yula, very interesting character. She can put up some of the highest damage numbers in the entire game. But besides that, let's get talking. It takes a while to get that damage out. You have to burst and you have to auto, 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 auto. Boom, you hit the big burst. She is physical. Her burst hits physical. Physical is the forgotten element of Genshin, okay? Hoyaverse doesn't give two shits about physical. They've gotten really nothing to help this team comp in a very long time. It doesn't have a ton of characters that support it and make it pop off. It's a forgotten element, okay? She needs energy a lot. If you cannot get your burst up with Eula consistently, she feels very useless. Sure, her autos do a good amount of damage, but that's not enough to give her value on the team. Her burst AoE, it's not that big. It's a good size, but it's not a big size. So it's frustrating to play her because sometimes you're not perfectly spaced between all the enemies to get your burst to hit. And with that, and the final point, 
comes the Eula emote in chat. Chat, let him see it here on YouTube. Dude, her burst has to crit. It must crit. If this single one eensy, not eensy eensy, this one single attack does not crit, she feels like dog water. Okay, dude, your Hu Tao has 75% crit and you crit 75% of those charge attacks you hit, that's great, dude. But Eula, even at 75%, that is a 25% chance that your burst just winds all this work, all this time, all this effort into just this one like boom. Yeah, sorry about that, dude. It's so tough because I like Eula. I think she's fun. If you take the time to master Eula, you pull her, you become a Eula fan, Eula simp, and you do all the time to master her intricacies, dude, you're gonna have a really fun time. But in the grand scheme of things, not that strong. All right, if you follow Genshin Impact in any way, you probably know we're getting our first game-changing character in Kazuha, baby. He's the absolute freaking GOAT support in this game. Homies, let me break it down for you, okay? This guy feels like he doesn't need energy recharge at all just because he generates so much energy. Naturally, you do need some energy recharge, but his burst is up all the time. His skill, you've got the tap version, the hold version. Either way, you get on-demand crowd control sucking up enemies right where you want them, which is super valuable. On top of that, he's Animo. Viridus and Venerer Shred, godlike just that alone he's pretty decent it doesn't end there bro he's got the passive that multiplies the whole team's elemental damage of the type of element he's swirled with if you're active in the community right now you know farina boosts elemental damage bonus and that's something that makes her really strong kazuha does that too on demand whatever element you want dude this guy does so much the crowd control the shred the low cooldowns, the energy generation, the damage amplification. He is absolutely game changing. When you get this guy on your account, you feel every single team comp that you wanna run with Kazuha, which is almost every team in the entire game can fit Kazuha. You feel it get a massive buff. This guy is absolutely goaded. He is pretty darn close to a character that every single player probably wants on their account. Let's go. Wet sock girlfriend with a big forehead is Aika. I will say right now, I think Aika is the best raw cryo damage DPS in the entire game of Genshin Impact, okay? Freeze Aika teams, those are the like pinnacle of freeze teams in Genshin. Ganyu was the first one to do it with Morgana, but I think you ask people nowadays, what's the go-to best freeze team? It's Ayaka, dude. She does so much work. Now, she has a couple pitfalls. She needs a lot of energy regeneration to keep her burst up. And dude, her freeze teams are extremely linear. You have Ayaka, then you want Shenha on the squad. You want a Hydro character so you can freeze and you want an Animo character so that you can swirl Cryo to amplify the damage because freeze is hard to amplify the damage. So her freeze team's super linear, pretty darn one dimensional. Now, there are some really fun Ayaka melt teams, okay? You've got like Bennett, Jean, Sunfire melting. You've got Nahida, Burn melting with Ayaka and you've got Shangling stuff. So like you can run these really high damage, really fun Ayaka melt teams as well. I was about to throw her right here but here's the problem with Aika not only the energy that's fine you can do that she's just one of those characters that is at the will of Hoyo verse giving us good abyss cycles because a lot of enemies can't get frozen and then that makes these freeze teams just literally unplayable in the abyss and that sucks so you gotta run a melt team and like Melt is harder to run and all that kind of stuff. Some people just don't even have a build, don't know how to play it. So, dude, but she just does so much freaking damage. My heart is telling me I should probably move her down just a little bit. I think we're going to put Aika there. She is still super, super good. And I think she's one of the funnest characters to like build and get your damage up, get your stats up, all that kind of stuff. Aika's still really good. S tier. This is what the list currently looks like now. Tainari was hiding behind my camera. We do have a lot of S very strong characters, but that's just because a lot of characters in Genshin are good. 
Let's move. One of my personal favorite characters ever in all of Genshin Impact, the keychain you see on my mic right now, Yoi Mia, the bundle of joy, baby. Yoles in the chat. As a triple crowned Yoi Mia with Thundering Pulse Haver, I do know a lot about Yoi Mia and I play her a lot. This breaks my heart. I am going to be completely unbiased in my judgment of Yoi Mia. Yoi Mia's single target damage is extremely freaking high. It works very well. But one thing about it is that you need to vape her certain attacks. You want to vape her one, four, and seventh auto attacks in her string for her to do maximum damage. And this may sound easy, or it's really not, but it may sound easy to you. Her whole auto attack string gets interrupted if you move or dash at all. And you, of course, have to do that because her attack string from one to seven takes a long time to get the attacks out. So you got to dash and then it interrupts the string. You're not vaping the proper attacks and that just feels bad. She's arguably hard to be able to get the max DPS out of her. And another problem Yomiya has, absolutely zero AOE whatsoever. You take a character like Hu Tao into a floor with two to three enemies. Dude, Hu Tao, she bounces all around the map. She can hit one, hit another, hit one and another. You aim the charge attacks well, you can hit multiple targets, two or three of them all at the same time. Yomiya cannot do that. She just hits one enemy and that is it. Don't bring up her burst, her burst sucks. Dude, it really breaks my heart. The more and more and more I play Yoimiya, the less places I feel that I can use her well in the abyss without taking a team that lowers her damage, without using something like Zhongli. I really feel like this is where it is. She's really good at certain times, but most of the time, she just doesn't really get it done. Man, that breaks my heart. The queen of Ina Zuma. Ladies and gentlemen, I've mentioned my last tier list, okay, that came out about eight months ago, a few times. I think that this was the hottest take of the entire tier list last time, the one that got the most people angry and mad in the comments, but it was what my heart told me to do. Have things changed for me and Raiden Shogun? Raiden Shogun is extremely good, okay? By no means is she not a unbelievably strong character. Off-field electro application is a great thing to have. We've already talked about that with Yai Miko and Fischl, one of the best characters in the game. Her burst does a absolute ton of damage. You can get her to do amazing hyper carry levels of damage with characters like Bennett and Kazuha or Kujo Sara in the mix to boost that stuff up even more, okay? She can be a hyper carry. She can be an off-field electro applicator and she generates energy for the team. It is not an unbelievably large amount of energy, but dude, when you lower characters' energy requirements, they now have room to run more offensive stats. Artifacts that might give them better crit stats, more attack, stuff like that, because their energy requirements just got lowered a tiny bit. That is very valuable. And then finally, Raiden Shogun applies Electro around the target wherever they are hit on the map, as long as you have your skill up. And this is especially huge for Hyper Bloom, one of the best comps in the entire game. You guys may know Kuki Shinobu 4-star is an absolute queen at Hyper Bloom because of her off-field AOE around your character Electro application. Raiden does it around the enemy. And that is so much better than around the character because you can have the distance away. You can ranged slice down these seeds. And Raiden Shogun's attack is whoosh, it like slashes across a lot of the screen. It's easier to hit multiple seeds at the same time. So she's a hyper bloom goat, a hyper carry, electro applicator, energy generator. I gotta put her in to the S plus tier. She is moving up the tier list in my opinion. It's no secret she's a good character, guys. I had her at the very, very top of very strong, but I'm going to be honest. I don't think she's a character that has that like immediate boom, humongous impact once they drop on your account. I think Kazuha and some of the other characters in S tier make a way bigger immediate splash on your account than Raiden Shogun. She's probably going to be the bottom character of S plus, but 
She's absolutely goaded. Homies, it is time for my favorite character in the entire game. My flagship mascot character of my whole channel, Sango no Mia, Kokomi the Goat. Kokomi is Hydro, what I think is the best element in the entire game. I personally argue that Kokomi is the best healer in the entire game. The jellyfish on field hits really big, huge boom. Heal ticks to the on-field character, and you can switch easily in between the intervals, get everybody healed up nice and juicy while applying Hydro. The best element in the game, I know I already said it, that enables all the best reactions that Genshin has to offer. And her burst, you can come in, she does all right damage. I mean, mine does a lot of damage, okay? But uh, we won't talk about that. But that drives a lot of reactions when you can apply Hydro with your normal attacks, and it as well heals the team up even more. Last time, I had Kokomi in the S plus tier. And I would even argue that healing has gotten a little bit better. This is the problem. I think she is the best at what she does. I think she is replaceable at what she does. Raiden, Kazuha, the other characters that are gonna be in S plus tier, they're not replaceable in what they can do, okay? You can get off-field hydro applicators to enable your freeze team or your bloom team. You can get other healers to heal up your squad on the bloom team, especially when you need any team that you need a, a healer, right, with Kokomi. There's a lot of healers now. There's a lot of hydro applicators now. I think she is very good, but she's extremely low damage and she's not like massively, massively high impact on your account. I love her. I think most late game players want a Kokomi on their account for the vast amount of support she can do. I think she is really good, but I think she goes to very strong characters this time around. I think she is very deserving of a high tier placing on this tier list. I just don't quite think she deserves S plus right now. It's time for Arataki Ito, the numero uno, baby. Ito is a very fun, cool, charismatic, awesome character. And he's also G. <laughs> Ito can do a lot of freaking damage. And I think he is very fun to play, okay? But he is a character that is super team restrictive. He is attached to the hip bro with a four-star character, Goro. If you do not have Goro on your team with Ito, you pretty much just like can't run him. There's almost no real point in running Ito on your team. He's Geo, he has no reactions, hard to amplify Geo damage, just like how I talked about Animo. Dude, you can get stuff done with Ito. Absolutely, just as you can get stuff done with any of these characters. But when I look at all of these other characters in the game, and I just think of his relative power level compared to them, another thing is his energy requirements are tough. He himself does not generate that much energy, especially because you want to Ushi to get stacks before you burst. So you gotta do like a skill into burst. And then even then you have trouble generating enough energy to get that burst up again. So he has weird stat requirements. Last time I had him in the solid characters tier, I really do like Ito, but I think I'm moving him somewhere around here. Shout out to the Ito mains out there. He's a fun character. He's not broken though. The sexy ice mama of Genshin Impact. One of the many. Shen ha is up to bat. I rated Shen ha quite low on my last tier list, but I do want to say, my last tier list was specifically focused around should you pull for that character? Are they worth your primo gems? And this tier list is way more directed at just a character's overall strength in the whole entirety of Genshin Impact. Should you pull for them, your account, lots of different things are taken into account this time around. Shen ha gets stronger and stronger and stronger the more cryo characters come out in Genshin. She wants to do one freaking thing, and that is just boost up the damage of her cryo allies, okay? But with how her skill works and the timings and the quills, she actually doesn't synergize like perfectly with every cryo character in the game. There is just a very low amount of team comps in the whole game where you want Shen on her. But every cryo character that comes out in the game, Shen ha makes a massive difference in boosting up their damage to just like heights unknown. Heights you cannot achieve without her. She does something very freaking unique. So with all of that said, I'm keeping Shen ha right here on the list. I do not recommend you pull for her if you do not have Aika. Right now, I think I would only pull for Shenha if you have Aika. I don't think she's worth it if you have Ganyu. I don't even think she's worth it if you have Risley. But 
there might be some cryo characters that come out in the future, maybe six months from now, maybe a year from now, that Shenha just absolutely pops off with. And I think that that's cool. I think she has a very bright future as a Genshin character. Genshin is not dying anytime soon, all right? So Shenha is a very strong, but very, very niche character. All right, let's get another celebrity shot from the chat. Who do you guys want next? Uh-oh, Velve was quick. Velve was really quick with Linny. Homies, Linny does a ton of freaking damage. This is an extremely high DPS character. He is a pyro character, cool, with how his passive works, how his team comps work. He pretty much only wants to be on a mono pyro team, which is, a little lame, it's very limiting in what he can do. So it makes his team comps very limited, okay? So I'm not a huge fan of that. And then he's a charge shot based character. And it's like a held for a long time charge shot, which means, dude, you almost always are going to want a shield with him because it's gonna be very frustrating to not get knocked around when you gotta hold these charge shots for a long time. So frustrating and unique play style, very unique team comps, but very high damage. I think if you are a Linny fan and you master him and you've got his best teams, dude, this guy feels absolutely amazing. But just like in the grand scheme of all the characters in Genshin, I think most characters are more versatile and have higher damage ceilings and all that kind of stuff. I think he is very, very good though. So Linny, top of solid characters. All right, chat, Boba Sipper, Ayato. Now, how is the handsome man faring here in Genshin Impact? Ayato, guys, he's good. What I've been saying for a long time, he's the jack of all trades hydro character in Genshin. He can apply hydro a lot on field and off field with his burst. He does have a little bit of supportish qualities, but he doesn't generate a lot of energy for the team. Uh, in hydro, he does, but not a ton. He needs to be on field for a very long time, which means he needs to run with very specific team members that can, you know, synergize with that. Kind of a problem that Sino has. We'll get to him as well. There are hydro characters that do a lot more damage than him. There are hydro characters that do a lot more support than him. He's got them all bundled up into one, but when he's trying to do too much, he kind of just doesn't become the absolute king goat of any of those things. So moved around the tier list a little bit. I think Aito is gonna go right there. Aito is fun, he's good, he's cool. He's just not an absolute game breaker and he's not crazy unique. I think this is pretty fair for Aito. Next up, Ye Lon, one of the absolute best characters in the game. She is in S+, we'll see where I move her into S+, after a little bit of discussion. Hydro is the best element in the entire game, okay? Her skill, generates a ton of energy particles in her one big burst, which is great for the team. But let's get into the sauce. Her burst, dude. It is an off-field hydro application, coordinated attack with normal attacks that does a lot of freaking damage and applies a lot of freaking hydro. She enables all of the best teams in all of Genshin Impact, genuinely. Hu Tao Vape, the team that does insane damage numbers. Yelon is amazing for that. Raiden Shogun, I mentioned Hyper Bloom, right? Dude, you know who's the premier Hyper Bloom Hydro enabler? Yaylon, bro, Yaylon. Ayaka Freeze teams, yeah, you can run Kokomi, you can run the Hydro healers, but if you can get the healing from somewhere else, Ayaka is there to do a ton of damage. Yaylon has a passive that boosts the active character's damage by a little bit of percent each second they're on the field, so she supports the team in that way too. Hyper Bloom, she's the GOAT. Virgin, she's the GOAT. Mono Hydro, she's the GOAT. Vape, she's amazing. She even has crowd control. She even has mobility. She runs around the map. She's able to move your character, dodge attacks, position yourselves in a great way in the abyss, whatever game mode you're playing. Every single player that gets this character on their account is going to feel the raw, amazing power of having Yelan. I definitely put her above Raiden Shogun in my humble opinion. There are more characters that replace Kazuha. Pretty much any animal character can do what he does light. Okay, they're like Kazuha light. And then yes, we all know the elephant in the room, Shing Cho, four star, absolutely goaded is very similar in parallel to Yelan, but that's just one and done, that's it. Yelan is absolutely busted. I am locking in with Yelan as the best character currently. What's up, Muhammadcha, TCG God? Guys, Sino is an interesting character. 
he can do a lot of damage. On-field Electro is very good right now because of Dendro, Hyper Bloom, etc. All these team comps, it's a good element to have. Sino has some drawbacks. His burst lasts an extremely long time in comparison to the popular buffs that he wants on his team. What I mean by that is like, if you want him on a Hyper Bloom team, his burst is going to outlast Xing Cho's and Ye Lan's. So you're going to be on the field where you still want to be doing Sino damage, but you don't have that Hydro application, okay? Maybe you want a big attack boost from a character uh, like Bennett or a character with tenacity of the Millilith. The skill, whatever you're running, is going to drop off before he is done. Here is a big one too, Nikita. Nikita's skill lasts an amazingly long time. She's the GOAT, very great character but against multiple waves of enemies, okay? So you mark the three, I don't know, Vish halves in the abyss, and you do the whatever, everything else on your team, Fischl, all that, and then Sino comes in and starts popping off. They're all dead really fast, but Nahida's skill is no longer on the field because there's a new wave of enemies, and they have been giving us so much different wave-based floors of floor 12 of the abyss that like now Nikita, an amazing character that usually works well with Sino, it's not perfect. And then Baizu, we all know Baizu is great uh, with Sino, but even Sino outlasts Baizu. So like he just has these team comp problems. He has some energy requirement problems because of how long he stays on the field. He can do a lot of damage, but he has specific needs and specific teammates that he really needs. And I don't know, that makes him a little less flexible. I do feel like Sino has been getting better with certain teammates. So I'm gonna put him here. He's a very solid character. He's very good. Just all those reasons above keep him where he is now. Pretty dancing lady from Sumeru. It's time for Nilu to enter the frame. I absolutely love this character. I think that she is absolutely broken, okay? Absolutely broken. You have to throw out the things in your mind about that she limits the team comps that you can run. Yes, of course she does. She can only be ran with Hydro and Dendro characters for her Bountiful Cores to activate. But what are Bountiful Cores? Bountiful Cores are military grade tactical nukes put all over the field that just completely obliterate every floor of the abyss so long as they are not immune to freaking dendro and hydro and stuff okay they're crazy and now how do you get that damage to go up elemental mastery that's it every single character on neo's team you don't need crit rate you don't need crit damage yeah maybe get some hp because the blooms do damage to you too you need a healer so you don't die to your own blooms but elemental mastery on the character that is causing blooms that's it your artifacts weapons the quality that they need to be at is completely tanked lowered the bar is lowered so much because dude that's just how they made bloom and nilu is absolutely broken if you get nilu on your account clearing the abyss is really really easy and i think that that is the gauge of how strong a character is straight up that is it do you, can you 36 star the abyss? Yes, you can. I think Nilu is legitimately a game changing, broken, completely broken character. The value of pulling a character and then being able to clear hard content in the game, I think Nilu is quite possibly the number one character in the entire game. If you don't get it, you just gotta try it out. This character is brain dead, broken as hell. S plus Nilu, I will not change. Start playing the beautiful Sumeru fairy music. <laughs> Nahida is absolutely broken. I talk about it all the time. Dendro is just a fantastic element. It creates amazing reactions. Bloom with Nilu, broken. Burgeon, amazing. Hyper Bloom, absolutely cracked. Aggravate and spread, they go absolutely wild. Nikita is the best dendro applicator in the game. Done. The sentence is over. In literally 99.9 .9 of situations, the only one is against multiple wave enemies when you have a DPS that needs to be on the field for a long time. Besides that, dude, Nikita goes so freaking crazy. She's literally just too good. 
all the dendro team comps in the game you want nahida on them i'm going to stop repeating myself she's absolutely cracked she's fun to build you don't have to run standard stats you can just stack a bunch of elemental mastery on her and she's broken i personally want to go stuff like elemental mastery um dendro crit elemental animal crit i think that she benefits a lot from crit i think people don't realize that i think she's probably i think she's probably the best character in the entire game yay lon and shing cho are very close they both do amazing things no one really does it like nikita she's amazing she's godlike she's broken she's not a con baby she's got that god flow okay there you go nita emo kid rejoice baby if you're skipping around and you're a wanderer fan and you just want to hear this part I talked about it in Xiao's part of the tier list. Animo DPSs have it rough. Animo is a hard element to amplify the damage of compared to most other elements in the game, except for Geo. And they are really tied right now to having a C6 Faruzan on their team. And that is just pretty darn lame. Dude, I love Faruzan. I don't have a C6 Faruzan. I think I have a C1 or something like that. Who knows if I'll ever get one, dude. Wanderer is a good character. He can do a lot of damage. He's fun to play. And he actually benefits a lot more than a character like Shao from having other elements on the team because of all the bonus effects he gets from swirling with Pyro, swirling with Hydro, all that cool stuff. But he has some shortcomings for sure. He's like a kill or be killed character. If you don't want to run a shield, then you got to be like perfect on your dodging. And every time you dodge, it takes energy, which literally lowers his DPS because it lowers the energy he has and it puts you on the ground sooner. And that sucks. When you get hit, it feels terrible with this character. He's probably better than Shao. I think they are a lot closer to each other than people may suspect. Yes, they're animal DPSs, but I just mean in almost like their DPS ceiling. Shao has a higher raw damage, Wanderer works better with other elements. And I think at the end of the day, they can both do a lot of damage, but they're not super top tier characters in the game and they require a lot of support. He's good, but not batshit insane. The man who introduced big biceps into Genshin Impact, I think I'll hype them, is one of the best DPS characters in the entire game. Dendro is a fantastic element, and the fact that he is based off of normal attacks, it means that he synergizes with all of some of the best characters in the game. I'm talking Ye Lan, I'm talking Shing Cho, I'm talking Toma for Virgin, all this kind of stuff. Because he's normal attack based, he becomes the best Dendro DPS in the game over characters like Tainari or an on field Nahida if you're not like C6 Nahida, whatever. Okay, dude, this character is cracked. He's so good, he's so fun to play, he's so fun to build, getting his stats up, he works so well with easy free-to-play weapons like Iron Sting. This character is so good, and I really wanna pull him, but I'm too addicted to pulling for cute anime girls, and I don't know if I can drop the Primos. I genuinely think he's probably right here. Dendro's broken, he applies it, he spreads it, he claps it, he destroys the abyss. He's an absolute legend. All hide them is really, really, really good, guys. Let's drop some sex denied in the chat. Four, one of the craziest characters Genshin has ever released, New Valette. This guy has some of the most crazy, insane DPS as a one-off character this game has ever freaking seen. I genuinely think that he's kind of overtuned, if I'm being completely honest. My problems with Nouvellet are these. A Nouvellet team is just like, what teammates can I put on here that like will do some stuff that won't really get in Nouvellet's way while he just kills everything? So like, I don't know, I think that's a little bit lame. He is just a raw damage dealing character. He is the team, you guys are right. He literally is the team. It's obviously good, he's obviously cracked, it just makes him feel not versatile and it's just interesting. It's very interesting. There's no character like him that can just solo obliterate the game as hard as he can. But he does apply Hydro and we all know Hydro is an amazing element, which lets him run things like Hyper Bloom, which lets him run things with Yai Miko or Fischl just to do, you know, Electro Charge reactions, stuff like that. So like, it's not like he's doing literally nothing but just do a bunch of damage and kill the team. I feel really weird putting just a absolutely raw does pretty much nothing but an absolute crap ton of damage 
into Game Changer. Dude, but he does. But he does just like allow you to destroy everything. He, this is tough for me because I think Game Changers are these characters that have to just literally change what you can do to take that with your characters. And I feel like he doesn't do that, but like, oh, he's crazy. It doesn't go with my personal way I think about the game, but like he's the first character I think they've overtuned so much that he is just completely batshit broken. And I think I will slide him into S plus just for that. I think that's fair. He's a, he is a game changer. He does change the game. He's broken. We've got Risley, Risley, Hot Daddy, Jail Daddy is him. Cryo DPS character. We do have some Cryo DPS characters in the very strong tier in Ganyu and Aika. Now does Risley hold up to the hype of the goat and the big forehead girl? Um, no, he does not. He's a very cool character. He's fun and he does a good amount of damage. You can beat the Abyss with him totally. But dudes, he's locked behind a really lame mechanic where he has to be above 60% HP for him to do a ton of damage. And his skill is draining his HP constantly. So at C0, which this tier list is for, dude, he, he pretty much needs a healer on his team. And dude, there's another character on this tier list that we haven't gotten to yet. Wonder if you can guess who it is, who like you need a healer on the team, but what they provide is insane. What Risley provides when you have to have a healer on your team is like some cool cryo damage. His teams are limited. His C1 fixes all his problems, which is just really lame. I don't like that. And then even if you get him operating at max capacity, he's good, but he's not game breaking. I think he probably goes here. I hope that things open up for him in the future. And if you really love him, dude, maybe save up the primos and get that, get that C1. But yeah, we'll put Risley here in A. Solid characters. Now it is time for the grand finale of the show. And who else to save? But Farina, the showstopper herself, baby, the Hydro Archon. There is so much to talk about Farina, but I'm not just gonna break down every single mechanic about her because I got a full Farina guide on the channel. Check that shit out. Farina is a massive damage amplificator buffer for the entire team. Her burst based on fanfare stacks, which you get from healing or losing HP. Every single fanfare stack, when her burst is up, the whole team's damage percent goes up. This is an invaluable, amazing freaking buff for the team. Not to mention, she summons her three hell cretin hydro demons that suck your team's health away and do, honestly, a lot of freaking damage. So she synergizes perfectly with the golden troop set. And she's got good free-to-play options in Fluve Sandra Ferryman, Festering Desire if you got it from back then. So great weapon options, Fav, all that good stuff. This all comes at the price that your team needs a healer. You have to have a healer to heal up your team back up to full so that you not only gain more fanfare stacks, but she has a passive where her little dudes do more damage if the characters on the team are over 50% HP. So she limits your team building, okay? But what you get out of her is very, very, very beneficial. I think what she does is amazing, but I think the team comps that she enables and unlocks on your team, I mean, on your account, they are not necessary to have. She unlocks a new play style on your account, but you do not like need that team comp. It is not a team comp that is going to absolutely blow everything you know about Genshin out of the water. Hutao Vape without Farina is godlike. Hyper Bloom without Farina is godlike, okay? All these teams, they operate without her, but they can get a slightly better version or another fun, interesting version that's super strong when you have Farina. I think the teams that she does affect in an insane way are like Mono Hydro. Okay, I think Mono Hydro without Farina is fine. I think Mono Hydro with Farina is absolutely just broken. You just power wash the entire abyss. Cl shut and close. <laughs> close and shut, baby. Okay, I can't talk. I've been streaming forever. I think the power level that she gives to the game is game changing. I don't think what she does 
is game changing. It's really strong and fun and cool. I feel like everyone's gonna cry and be mad about this. I think she goes right here. When you pull her, you've got a lot of fun, new team comps to run that, that shit up, but you, she's, you don't need her. She doesn't make any team comps possible that were impossible without her or that were bad without her. She's awesome. She's really good. And I think that this is a totally fair, respectable place for me to put Farina. She's an S plus. What do you guys think about my Farina rating? 68, 69, stop. Dude, uh, I'm happy with this. Ladies and gentlemen, after two hours and 15 minutes here live on the stream, this is my complete updated as of 4.2 Fontaine five-star tier list for every single character in all of Genshin. Homies, as you know, this was done on stream. Come check out the Twitch stream. I would absolutely love to see you and everyone here would love to see you as well. But hey, if you're just gonna stay on YouTube, I appreciate you. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Homies, we're really trying to hit 50K subs. It would mean the absolute world to me. I promise you'll love every video that you see on the channel. I really, really do. Big shout outs to the patrons. Yes, there is an Eeks Patreon where you get amazing rewards. Check it out down below. But I want to give a shout out to Zik, Alchemist, Poison Tongue Boy, Gophers, Caldo, Cloudy, Meow. You guys are awesome. Everyone else on Patreon, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you guys very much. Homies, expect another tier list coming soon, baby. Is it going to be weapons? Is it going to be four-star characters? We'll just have to wait and see, but I appreciate you clicking on my channel in any way. Have a great day. Happy holidays. See you guys later.